It all started in the Niger Delta in the early 1980s. Elderly women were widely accused and persecuted for witchcraft in the region. Every time there was a sudden sickness or death of a family member, the oldest woman or women in that family become the first suspect. It was even worse for old women who were the only survivor in their family. People usually believed they killed all their family members just to live longer. They accused these old women of being witches who suck human blood and take away innocent lives. These women were often stripped naked, beaten to a state of stupor, and most of the time burnt alive. Many years after till today in some parts of Nigeria, old women are still victims of these cruel accusations. Sadly, these accusations have also been extended to children. Accusations of children of being witches exploded in the early 2000s in the Niger Delta area of Nigeria. By 2008, it was estimated that 15,000 children had been branded as witches in the southern states of Ibom and Cross River. These accusers believe that since Niger Delta is a region largely surrounded by water, they are marine spirits that possess the human bodies. They believe that children are weaker vessels whose souls cannot repel being possessed by these evil spirits. These accusations mark the beginning of pain, torture, abandonment, and death of many children in the Niger Delta area. Why some of these children were not so lucky to survive the bitter trauma? Steven, who is also known as Hope, the little boy whose rescue story made it to the front pages in Nigeria is one of the lucky survivors of these bitter stories of child witchcraft. In 2013, in a silent village in Akwaibom State, Nigeria, a 14-year-old girl was forced into marriage with a 50-year-old village head. This young girl was Steven's mother. Steven was born when his mother was just 15 years old. She was very young, vulnerable, and helpless. Her parents were poor and sick. There was no way she could have resisted the marriage. The unholy marriage only made things worse for Steven's mother. She was abused and forced to have a second pregnancy in less than a year after giving birth to Steven. In the middle of all her troubles, Steven's mother lost her parents' whom she had been trying to provide money to care for their failing health. Although, what happened between 2015 and 2016 when Steven's mother abandoned him and left the village remained a story the sources have decided to keep confidential. In 2015, Steven's mother left the village, leaving her son Steven at the mercy of the villagers. Steven became homeless. He had no clothes and he would walk aimlessly from one part of the village to another. He would become very hungry and beg for food. Sometimes, he was lucky to have some good Samaritan give him food and other times he would go hungry for several days. In his lonely times, Stephen would cry and cry until tears dried up in his eyes. He would look around just wanting to have someone take care of him, but he would find no one. After crying for a long time without anyone coming to console him, Stephen would pick himself up again and start roaming the village looking for what to eat. Steven was not really sure what his existence was all about. He would imagine if this was how life was for everyone. But when he looked around, other children like him were not really like him. They have houses they sleep in and clothes on their body. Only then, he realized there was something not right about him. Sometimes, it would rain heavily with Steven having no place to call home. He would be out in the cold and nobody cared. Steven's matter worsened after the villagers started seeing Steven as a witch. They believed Steven was paying the price of being a witch. Many of them stayed away from Steven. They told their children to avoid him. Many of them stopped giving him food. And one year old Steven had to depend on total strangers to leave. Steven's sad situation stirred emotions in one of the villagers who had an opposite opinion about Steven. This villager believed that Steven was not a witch, only a victim of circumstance. But this villager could not take Steven in because of the stigmatization surrounding the helpless little boy. But this villager had another way to help Steven. This villager was going to call Anya Ringren, a Danish humanitarian, to come to Steven's aid. Anya is an humanitarian from Denmark. She is a twin and married to a Nigerian. Anya became interested in helping abandoned children accused of witchcraft in 2008 when she came across a documentary online that captured the gruesome killing 
in search of, of these helpless children. Anya abandoned everything she had and flew to Nigeria where she found an organization that cares for these children in Accra Ibom State. During her visit to Nigeria, Anya met a Nigerian law student, David, whom she started working and later fell in love with. Anya and David started working hard together to protect the helpless children accused of witchcraft in the Niger Delta area. In 2015, around the same time Stephen was abandoned in the village, Anya and David bought a large piece of land in Akwaibom on which they built the Land of Hope Children's Center. This center has its own hospital and business school. The center is completely fenced and designed to provide a safe environment for the children. In 2016, Anya received a call. The caller was someone who had heard about Anya's humanitarian services and would like Anya to help a little boy who had been accused of witchcraft and abandoned on the streets. This caller was the same villager who had been seeing Stephen walking around naked in the village. Anya and David immediately took off to the village where they met Stephen still wandering around. Stephen was looking very weak, but his spirit was so strong. Immediately Anya saw Stephen, she brought out water and gave it to the little boy. This moment was caught on camera and that was the same moment that gave birth to the viral photo that changed both Anya's and Stephen's Steven's lives forever. Anya took Steven to the hospital where he was attended to. In a very short time, Steven started responding to treatment and showing improvements in his health. The viral photo drew people's attention to Steven's story and Anya's humanitarian services in Akwaibom. Funds were raised by many good Samaritans who were touched by Steven's story. For over five years now, Steven has been staying in the land of Hope Children's Center where he lives with other children. Steven has greatly improved in his health, his overall appearance, and more importantly, his education. Anya made sure Steven and the other children at the center get the best of care. About seven years after Steven was rescued, Anya was able to locate Steven's mother. The reunion was touching as Steven got to see his mother for the very first time since he was abandoned in the village. According to Anya, Steven will continue to live at the center while plans are being put in place for his mother because she is too young and vulnerable to take care of Steven at this time. All thanks to Anya, David and the good Samaritans who rose up to support Steven and the other helpless children. These children had no hope. But you all give them hope. When others abandoned them, you guys came to their rescue. So I am saying a big thank you to everyone who have contributed positively to the lives of these children. <laughs>